some comparisons of uh, the emissions, the CO2 emissions, for various countries around uh, the globe. And uh, we can see again, there sits the United Arab Emirates, where uh, the emission is about 56 tons of CO2 per capita. Uh, Luxembourg is very high up. And then very closely behind uh, comes the US and, and Canada. And then there is a jump, it's almost a, a two-fold jump when we go to uh, Europe, Western Europe, certainly. Germany is at about 10.4, about half of the emissions of Canada and the US. Denmark, the UK, France. And then we go to uh, potential giants of the 21st century. Okay. Uh, a very uh, sophisticated uh, country from the viewpoint of knowledge with a lot of potential. Uh, large population mass, large resources. They're not going to be at one ton of CO2 per uh, capita for very, very long. And then we've got the poor and southern under and uh, basically Mali, one of the poorest countries in the Sahel of uh, Africa. If I could do a simple ratio okay, to compute the consumption of CO2 per capita in various countries compared to Canada, this is where we come. So we consume or we emit in Canada 318 times the amount of CO2 for each capita. Okay, we're at nearly twice the amounts in most of Western Europe. And there are a number of reasons for that. Some of them are socioeconomic ones, uh, some of them more related to uh, a lifestyle choice and uh, the climate, etc. There's a couple of things as well that I'd like to show you. And this is sort of kind of puzzling because when I dug up this data, uh, I updated this data because it, it's 2004 from the, the World Bank database. I, I was surprised. Denmark, as many of you know, uh, is the country in the world which has deployed, which has the highest uh, percentage of electricity normally produced from wind. Okay? Their emissions are not that different from Germany and the UK. And what's the country that sits about the lowest in Europe, it's Poland. Does anyone know why? Nuclear. Nuclear, <coughs> Nuclear power. Okay. France has about 70% uh, of its power is from nuclear. Let's look at uh, another graph that shows us the, uh, again, uh, metric tons of carbon. So the data in the literature goes from carbon to CO2. Okay. <coughs> are that carbon uh, emissions are uh, obtained by dividing CO2 emissions by 3.5 or 3.6 so. so this is again in tons of carbon per year okay, uh, per capita and what we see is essentially where we're sitting right about now uh, and what the trends are expected under certain reasonably optimistic scenarios what the trends are supposed to be looking like in the longer term all the way to the end of this century for developing countries. And this, for the reasons that uh, I think become, have become abundantly clear just by looking at that curve of per capita energy consumption versus the GDP, we expect an explosion and continuous uh, quasi-linear growth of the demand in developing countries. This is really the big challenge. We have to meet our view. Let's examine the case of China. China stands currently at about three tons of uh, CO2 uh, emissions per, per capita. So it's, it's about uh, six times uh, less than, than Canada. The GDP, the economic growth of China is around 10%. And the demand in electricity, which fuels uh, the economic growth, is rising at the rate of about 15.5%. Uh, the oil demand was up by 18% in 2004. Okay. 
And so things are really going through the roof with China. And because they're, they have vast resources in coal, and because it's expedient to uh, exploit coal, that's what they're doing currently. And this has a huge impact as well on, on, on uh, not only on uh, global climate change, <coughs> but on poor air quality. There are now clouds of particulate emissions that you can track in space that are carrying across the ocean. So in the long term, if it carries on like this, we could potentially have not only an issue of climate change, but also poor air quality, even uh, as far across uh, the Pacific Ocean as where we sit. So what their goals and their plans are is that they want to multiply their GDP by four. They expect that this will require a doubling of energy utilization, and they expect a doubling of urbanization. And urbanization comes uh, at, at, as well as a great cost because, of course, with the increasing prosperity, people can afford motorized transportation, and that sort of feeds back into the system and amplifies the problem. Uh -huh.